Okay, we've all seen the news. Streaming sites don't pay. We've also heard artists say, I'm going to take my music off of this platform. That might be fine if you're a multi-platinum. But if you're an independent artist, I think that's a big mistake. Because you're trying to break through. And because of streaming, it gives you the ability to grow a global presence, build a fan base that you can market and capitalize on whether it be actual sales of merchandise or selling your music from your website. This is Henry Clark. My, my channel is Senior Musicians Unite. And today I'm talking about what it cost to break an artist in 2024. And the reason why I did some research on that is because there is so much clamor about what streaming sites pay. And it really comes from independence more than anyone else. However, I think it needs to be looked at also from the investment, the capital investment of record companies, because it's significant. So do artists get ripped off from record companies? <laughs> Absolutely. We've seen so many stories of artists getting ripped off from record companies, right? And so you've got artists talking about getting ripped off from record companies, and you have the independents talking about getting ripped off from the streaming platforms, right? So this whole game is about who can rip the other off, but the game is also about who can capitalize on their popularity and what's left. So let's have a go at it. Breaking an artist in the music industry involves promoting them to the point where they have significant, significant commercial success because it costs a fortune. The process is expensive and often require substantial investment from record labels or independent managers. So I decided to take a look and see what some of those costs were in putting this whole thing together. And just so you know, one second, the costs break down as such. Recording time, recording and production time, easily in top studios is 50 to $500 an hour. Producers and engineers, top tier producers, you want Jay-Z on your album, you want Chris Lord Alge on your album, right? That can cost like thousands of dollars per track. Mixing and mastering can easily go up to 2K per song. You've got marketing and promotion, PR firms. Some of these PR firms are actually paying, being paid $10,000 a month to promote artists before they even have a hit. Social media campaigns, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, X, these all these ads, these ads sometimes can total up to 20K a month just in some of these marketing campaigns and music videos. I know we don't make a lot of videos anymore, but sometimes they'll make one large video and chop it up so that they can put 30 second clips on TikTok and stuff like that. And some of those can easily equal 500K. Radio promotion. How do you get on Sirius? How do you get on iHeartRadio, right? Why is it that independents are rally on those platforms? Because getting airplay on a major radio station involves hiring promoters and costing five to 10K. Some of these guys make up to 100K. So yeah, getting you on iHeartRadio, getting you on Sirius and stuff like that, right? There might be a few vacancies open, right? But the majors dominate those particular radio waves. And by the way, those radio waves also pay much higher royalties than the streaming sites. So you've got that. You've got touring and live performers, tour support. Tours are notoriously expensive. A lot of artists say they go on tour and they don't make anything because by the time they pay for the cruise and the production costs and the hotels and stuff like that, right? You know, their, their net gain is negative. Their popularity sometimes is bigger, but their net gain is pretty, pretty poor. You've got performance fees. You have all of that kind of stuff that's associated with that. So we talked about radio, terrestrial radio, right? What about the streaming? You know, we know for a fact that anybody can get on TuneCore or DistroKid. They put your stuff out there, right? But placement, playlist placement through a curator. The curators are really the gatekeepers to getting your song on certain playlists. Independence 
they can't get to the big curators because they don't have the money. I couldn't find out what it costs to hire a top-notch curator, but I can guarantee you it's probably pretty significant. The small independent artists have to go through places like Submit Hub, where you actually pay through credits a curator to listen to your song. And even these guys are bombarded with songs that they actually reject. As I understand, even trying to get t decent curators on Submit Hub can be can be a, it, can, it can be a hard hassle in trying to get that done. It can also get pretty costly too, you know, because those guys are making money too. But you can bet they're not making the kind of money that top curators getting you on the top playlist at Apple Music or Amazon or Sirius, you know, or or um, or Spotify that they do, you know. But like I said, I couldn't find couldn't find any research to show what they make, which means it's a hidden cost. They don't know. They don't want anybody to know. You know, at least I couldn't find out anyway, right? But also then there's miscellaneous cost, you know, legal and administrative costs for artists, right, can be significant, you know, contracts, intellectual property rights, other legal necessities, right, that stuff starts adding up. And of course, there's merchandising, designing merchandising, you know, marketing the merchandise, t-shirts, posters, all that kind of stuff. It can be a revenue stream, but it also comes with the cost as far as upfront and image and branding, right, creating, creating a, a brand identity for that artist, right. The cost for styling and photography, you know, those things, right? I mean, I'm sorry, but you can't do, you know, some of that stuff. I know they say, but a lot of that, that, that top-notch stuff is not done on an iPhone. You know, <laughs> believe me, it's not. You know, they're using, they're using some serious photographers, you know. So, the cost estimate for breaking an artist from my research was anywhere between 500K to 2 mil. 2 mil to break an artist, right? Which means that the revenue hasn't really started flowing yet. You know, uh, uh, they said that a major label might spend over a million dollars on a new artist campaign covering everything from recording to marketing. And the most amusing thing about this is that all of this comes out of the artist advance. <laughs> Isn't that funny? All of this comes out of the artist advance, which means the artist doesn't make any money until all of the advance all of the costs are paid back, and then they get a percentage of royalties based on what their contract stated. You know, I think it's what eight percent maybe that they get. So think about it. You know, that is that was a TLC story. Is that they paid? They were they 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 uh, made millions of dollars for the company and their albums and music and everything, and they couldn't even afford to buy a house. You know, I, I had a story of uh, the, my favorite one of my favorite groups was the Delphonics. And their song, La La Means I Love You, they, uh, that was a top, that was a major hit. And this was a long time ago, I know. But the claim is that they said they only got $1,000 for that song. $1,000? You know, just goes to show you. So in the end of the day, right, is there's a statement that says that nobody rips an artist off like a record company. <laughs> you know, so that's just part of it. So an independent versus a major label, you know, um, Independent artists, they, 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 you know, they spend less overall because they don't have the money, but they also reap higher rewards. Their profit margins don't have to be the same. You know, I mean, if you think about it, right, as an independent, you've got to come up with some cash because you have to promote yourself no matter what you do, no matter what field you're in, you have to promote. However, your return on investment could actually be better than a record company because all of these upfront costs that we talked about, that money will flow back to you if you have put the money up front. The problem is that a lot of independent artists don't even have the money. They're just not funded to make that, that effective transition. However, the opportunity is still there. So in conclusion, from all, everything I found out, you know, um, breaking an artist is multifaceted. It's an expensive endeavor. You know, and it requires strategic investments. And when I say strategic investment, what I mean is that, you know, you've got to invest in some marketing. You've got to invest in some TikTok, you know. You might have to invest in a little bit of video, camera work, things like that. Strategic, but it's got to be strategic. You've got to put it in the right place. And, of course, record companies are good at that versus independents are not so are not so good at that, you know. But the rewards are, can they can be substantial. The risks are also significant, though, because, let's be honest, you know, um, a lot of People who get signed to record companies, uh, they get dropped after one one song. If they don't have a hit up after a couple of songs, you know, they, they get dropped. They're just they're just out there, you know, right? Because the record company determined that the investment was not worth the payback, so they dropped the artist, and then the artist is back to square one. But in my opinion, you know, 
it's a great time to be an independent artist. It really, really is. In the past, the road to becoming a recording artist um, through a record company was like a million to one shot, you know. Had to submit demo tapes to the A&R team, you know, which if it was unsolicited, he just threw the shit in the trash can, man. They didn't care, you know. Nobody's gonna listen to your stuff, right? Unless you had a buddy that could kind of slide your song in there, right, you know. Um, on a side note, I was working with a, a mid-level company a couple of years ago. Well, actually, maybe a year ago, 18 months ago. And I submitted my songs to them through a friend. I had permission, you know, and I submitted my songs. And they loved my songs. They, the guy says, you know, he says, love my songs. So we communicated uh, back and forth through email. And um, he said, you know, what do you want from this, right? And I said, well, I'm an old guy. I want my songs covered, you know. I don't, I don't, I'm not going to go on tour. I'm not doing that, none of that kind of stuff. I just want my songs covered, you know. And he just told me, he says, well, Henry, here's the deal. You know, artists are smarter today than they were yesterday. And no artist or producer is really interested in covering your song because there's no money in it for them. If we cover your song, you still own the copyrights to the song. You may own the publishing rights. So not interested. Even if it's a good song, it doesn't matter. We just, there's no money in it for them. So they don't want to do that. They would rather... They would rather create a crappy song of their own and get the royalties from it than cover your good song you know, and have to pay you. you know? So he says, so, you know, so if we can find, um, if I find a producer that's short a song on an album or something like that, I'll pitch it to him. But I'm not overly optimistic. And he's right. It's been like 18 months and I haven't heard anything back, you know. So I'm not mad at him. Actually, I'm really thankful that he would come out and be straightforward because a lot of times you don't get that straightforward scoop, you know. Um, and this is where a lot of guys, they so worried about nobody, somebody's going to steal my song. No matter what God, you know, right? Man, nobody's going to steal your song. Man, nobody wants your song. <laughs> Believe me. Nobody cares. Nobody cares about your song. Just so you know. And the reason why I get it, it's not, it's not whether your song is good or bad. It's from the financial aspect that nobody wants your song. So stop worrying about somebody stealing your song because nobody cares. <laughs> you know, it's just the way it is, right? But anyway, it's still a great time to be an independent artist because if you're an independent artist, forget the streaming. If you become big enough in a global pers a perspective, right? You know, like these guys that on Spotify that's got 100, 200,000 um, followers or, or plays a month and everything, you know, they're doing other things. They're selling, they're marketing their stuff. They're selling stuff on their websites. You know, they're, 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 they're promoting other products. They're collaborating with other artists. They're doing all of those things. And a lot of these guys are actually making a very decent living, a really, really decent living. And a lot of them also, they don't tour either. They don't have the burden of touring. They're at home with their families they are making this music. They are doing their merchandising through their websites. And they are making a really, really good living. It is a long haul, absolutely. But so is anything in the entertainment industry is a long haul, you know. But again, it's a great time because if it wasn't for the viability of platforms like Spotify and TikTok and Apple Music and things like that, your chance of even getting heard by anybody except for through a major record company was second to none. So that's why I say it's a great time to be an independent artist. So stop worrying about what streaming is going to pay you and learn how to capitalize on the benefits of streaming helping you grow a global presence. And, and on a side note, um, um, Apple Music just came out. If you distribute through Apple Music, they came out with a new feature in their app that shows terrestrial radio stations that are playing your music. It's amazing how I have songs that are being played in Brazil, on radio in Brazil, on radio in Germany, on radio in Paris. I had no idea, no idea until I saw this, you know. Because now I need to add my songs to the sound exchange so I can make sure I get paid for them, you know. But my point is that I had no idea this was happening. And again, that's what I'm talking about. How did they get these songs? They got these songs because they heard these songs on one of the streaming sites. Because songs are not distributed to radio stations. They're only distributed to the streaming sites. So that's how they got wind of those songs. And those songs became popular enough that they started playing those songs. So that's why. It's such a great time to be an independent artist.
So that's what the data shows between being an independent and what record companies actually invest to break a star and the actual payback in comparison to what someone can get as an artist, not as a company, but as an artist on the streaming platforms. That's it, man. Feel free to comment. I'd love to know your thoughts and take care. Keep writing, keep producing, and stay at it because it's a long game. It's not a short game. It's a long game. Just keep enjoying doing what you do. I will talk to you guys later. Again, this is Henry Clark, Senior Musicians Unite, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.